selling my father's motorcycle. He passed away. Has key and paperwork. Helmet and jacket included. God bless, Jamie. 500 OBO. Dude. Score. Farewell, my cycle. I'd ride every evening. But then I died. And my son sold you cheap. Nineteen dicks all standing. But one came too soon. And already it's going soft. 1980s Honda CB750s are the fastest motorcycles you can buy sub $1,000. Fastest, good condition, maintained, title in hand, ready to ride turnkey bikes. And nobody is buying them because they're brown! Malay's era, look into the porta potty, fruit of the loom, skid mark, poo color. The Vetter Windjammer option is 8-track fresh, and the single piston discs and drums are dairy bar dad style. Which is unfortunate, because unlike Malay's era domestic cars, Honda CB750s in the 80s were engineering juggernauts, even more so than the 1969-1975 first production single cam CB750s that everybody wants to restore or cafe racer out. Because CB750 cafe bikes are still so hot. They're powered by a 77 horsepower at 9,000 RPM and 50 pound-feet of torque at 7,000 RPM. Double cam, inline four-cylinder, air-cooled engine with four valves per cylinder with a gentle compression ratio of 9 to 1. 15 pierced nipples in Poetry 101. This engine is fed by four carburetors, which pushes this 580 pound wet bike down the quarter mile in 12 to 12.7 seconds. Some CB750s are over 500 pounds, some are under 500 pounds. It depends on the options. This bike has a lot of extra stuff on it, so it's heavier. But despite the weight, it'll go on to a top speed of 120 to 124 miles an hour. So, if a 37-year-old motorcycle has manufacturing and material standards equaling or surpassing modern bikes, why do these touring bikes only command scooter prices on the second-hand market? Brown! Yeah, I know, but it's more than that. CB750Ks were, in their day, for yuppies and casuals, gentlemanly types who wanted to wade into the motorcycle pool without getting their cuffs wet. The chain guard and front sprocket cover let not one drop of chain lube or grease hit your trouser legs or shoes. You could ride these bikes in suits and stay clean. The engine dripped no oil, the valves rarely needed adjustment, and the carburetors stayed synchronized. My dick is a dick. Be quick. My dad was in Baghdad. So sad. My scrotum is a totem. Where is my closure? In a high-speed modem. And Honda's rear luggage system uses detachable suitcases. The idea was that you would ride your clean, quick, and comfortable Honda CB750 to Harrisburg Airport MDT, dismount, detach your luggage from the side mounts or top case, and swagger to the ticket counter like the handsome twat you are. Uh, shall I go to Aspen? Or, dare I say, tell you ride? Oh no, <laughs> uh, uh, my helmet is my carry-on. Mm, yes, I'm a rugged outdoorsman. Well, the CB750 was never meant to have street cred, or even be cool in the 70s and 80s. It was meant to sell. And it made Honda Motor Company stacks and stacks upon stacks and stacks. Twiddle dinklers. Which is a flip, because in the 1920s, through the war and into the 50s, Harley Davidson motorcycles were for the American gentleman, while British bikes were for rebels. I work at the home improvement. My boss is a cook, so I never flush my do do do. 
Then, Japanese bikes wooed the American nobility, becoming the establishment, leaving Harley to take the rebel role. In its day, a CB750 would walk a Harley 75, which was a 1,000cc V-twin. And today, this 1981 CB750K will beat a modern Harley 883 iron. Now, after the tariff years and after the AMF years, Harley took back the establishment position in society. While at the same time marketing their products as rebellious. You can't be both, Harley. And that's why classic Hondas like this CB750K took the rebel label back on the streets. If not in marketing and certainly not in used market sales. A heroin full, moan talking, hooded man boy tells me that the world is going to hell. He then spits into the weeds. But riding a Malays era Honda 4 is a big F you to 30 year old boomers in their least, oh I'm sorry, financed Harley Road Kings. Hey, what's up? My Honda was made before you were born. And it's just as fast, and it costs less than your chrome dress-up kit. Look at this. No vibration and still stable. Look, look, look. Take your hands off the bars. No wobble, no lane wandering, nothing. And it does this even with a shorter rake than modern cruisers. CB750s are stable. But the short rake still retains the flick over maneuvering, just like modern gull wings. I mean, you really have to think, a CB750, they're really sport bikes dressed up as cruisers. And if you're a tall guy, and the current crop of 250s and 300cc bikes are too small for you, consider an 80 Honda inline 4. It doesn't have to be the 750, they made other displacements, of course. But be careful, though. This may be more power than you can manage at first. And I mean that. 70 horsepower doesn't sound like much, but this double cam engine will zap up to 10,000 RPM if you foolishly twist as if you're on a 250cc bike. So just slowly roll on and you'll be fine. She wore a stringer shirt. Her bra was beige. She glared at me, speaking through her cigarette. What's the matter? Don't you like girls? Other fun things about this bike, spare fuses. They give you spare fuses and they're mounted right on the handle, right at the top of the handlebars. Look at that. I'll bet these are the original fuses too. You also get a center stand. Center, st uh, more bikes should have center stands. Shouldn't just be BMW these days. Center stands are great. You can lube the chain really easy and you can take off the rear wheel. You don't have to pay extra prices at the, uh, the, the local motorcycle place to change your tire if you're not a guy who does it yourself and you are a guy who does it yourself, then it's so much easier. But the turn signals don't have a clicker to turn them off. You have to move the turn signal switch back to the center each time you're done turning or changing lanes. That's kind of annoying. You do get air adjustable front forks, and the Vetter Windjammer fairing combo was so popular back in the day on UJM bikes, it became a common dealer option. But the only way CB750s appear cool or really become desirable is if they're cafeed out or if they're customized, because they just made so many of these things. And I'm proving the rule because yeah, I could buy one, it'd be great. But I don't want one. Why? I see burlap sack mothers with a list of grievances and twisted dick ex-husbands in other states. Their children are in emotional support classes. Some of these children will grow up to write great music. Because I want to be seen as adventurous. I want to be seen as exceptional. I want to be outstanding, not instanding. I want people to think I'm suffering for my fun. Weird, huh? And CB750s are so gosh darn perfect, they're infuriating. But they'll always be here for everyone. Anybody who wants a cheap, functional motorcycle. And we will see these bikes roll deep into the 21st century alongside modern designs. Because CB750s just won't die. The Harley bikes claim to still
free and run for the selfish.